Luke chapter number 1. Begin reading in verse number 5. The Bible says, There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias, of the course of Abia, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. Lord have mercy. How many of that of us how many of us could have that said about us? Blameless before the Lord. Hmm? Look at verse 7. And they had no child because that Elizabeth was barren. And they both were now well stricken in years. It came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. When Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard. And thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. Thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall... Uh, drink neither wine nor strong drink, and shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even as uh, even from his mother's womb. Many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God, and he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers uh, to the children, and the disobedient to the, uh, to the wisdom of the just, uh, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zacharias said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is well stricken in years. And the angel answering said unto him, I am Gabriel, that stand in the presence of God, and am sent to speak unto thee, and to show thee these glad tidings. And behold, thou shalt be dumb, and not be able to speak, until the day that these things shall be performed, because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season." And the people waited for Zacharias and marveled that he tarried so long in the temple. And when he came out, he could not speak unto them. And they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple, for he beckoned unto them and remained speechless. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the good testimonies. Thank you for being a good God and working in our midst and working in our lives and using us to impact other folks, even though, Father, we're not worthy of any of it. Father, we thank you for the good singing. We thank you, Lord, for ever loving us. Thank you for your tender mercy, and Lord, uh, your graciousness, and Lord, your love toward us. Now, Father, we do pray you'd bless those that are working with the children. On the other side, I pray for those children. You'd bless them. You'd help them. That, Lord, uh, the Word of God would be lodged in their hearts, that when they reach the age of accountability, that Word will take fruit in their hearts. And God will see them saved at a young age. I pray for those working with the teens. You'd bless their efforts. Bless those young people, Lord, and all the peer pressure and all that they face. I pray you'd give them that solid foundation that will help them to stand in the evil day. Now, Father, I pray you'd bless the reading of the Word of God. I pray you'd enlighten our hearts, our minds. Uh, I pray that, God, you would do something uh, uh, supernatural even in our midst tonight. Help us to ever grow closer to God. Uh, meet the needs of each and every heart. Be with those that are sick. Be with those that are, are facing uh, surgeries and procedures. Uh, be with uh, Miss Jackie, Brother Brian, and their uh, endeavor in the next few days. Be with uh, those that were mentioned uh, that, Lord, uh, folks have reached out to try and be a light to, be a help to. God, just continue to do great things because you are a great God. Help us this night, we pray, for it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It amen. I want to draw your attention to several things. I want you to notice, first of all, the problem. We find in verse number 7, uh, speaking of Zacharias and Elizabeth, that they had no child because that Elizabeth was barren, and they both were now well stricken in years. Uh, the problem is you have two folks that love God. They're faithful. They have a testimony that's impeccable. Uh, but Baron, uh, Elizabeth is barren and has not been able to have a child. 
back in Bible days, it was uh, not like today. Today it's kind of chic to wait till you're about 50 and are trying to have a child. Back in those days, uh, if uh, you didn't have a child, you were uh, spoken of in a sense that God had cursed you. And here, this fo family, they're impeccable. This couple has uh, lived a blameless life, but she is barren. And to add to the problem, now they are well stricken in years. Isn't it amazing that when it looks like there is no way, God knows how to make a way? Hmm? We see the problem. Now notice the panic in verse number 12. The Bible says that when Zechariah saw him, who Gabriel, uh, the archangel, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. Now don't throw off on Zacharias. I'm sure if the Lord sent an angel to stand before you, you'd fear as well. Uh, he's fearful, he's troubled. But notice when the Lord reveals himself and speaks to Zacharias, what is he doing? He's doing what every believer should be doing, being faithful. He's doing what he was supposed to do. He's in the house of God. Uh, he is burning the incense. He is uh, uh, fulfilling his role. Uh, and it was there God revealed himself to him. How many times have you been struggling with something? Uh, how many times have you had a question about something? Uh, how many times uh, did you wonder if God cares and in the midst of a service and you being faithful, uh, even though you have problems, even though you have questions, uh, in the midst of a service, God show up big in your heart and reveal and give you the very thing you've been seeking after. What a blessing. We see the panic. We see the problem. Notice the pronouncement in verse 13. But the angel said un unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard. Thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness. Many shall Rejoice at his birth, for he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, shall drink neither uh, wine nor strong drink, but shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall be turned unto the Lord their God, uh, and he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah, Elias or Elijah. Uh, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. What a pronouncement. He said, you're not only going to have a child. You're going to have one with the hand of God on him from the womb. And this boy's going to grow up. He's not going to be given the booze. Uh, 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 this boy's going to grow up. He's going to have God on him. He's going to turn the hearts of fathers back to their children, turn Israel back to God. Uh, many are going to be ready for when the Lord shows up. What a pronouncement. I mean, uh, Miss Brittany said in her testimony, what a blessing to know your children saved. You know, but can you imagine if God gave you reassurance that not only is He going to save your children, going to use them to change a nation? Yeah. What a mer what a message, huh? So we see the problem, the panic, the pronouncement, but then notice the pushback. Look at verse eighteen. And Zacharias said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife well stricken in years. Hmm? Now, can I say this is an obvious question? Can I say that if the Lord showed up to you and promised something that is far beyond your comprehension and it did not make sense, nor uh, was it practical, nor was it even something that was uh, even physically possible that you yourself wouldn't question God? Is that not what he's doing? He said, wait a second, Lord. <laughs> or wait a second, angel, Gabriel. I'm old, my wife's old, how's this possible? Hmm? I mean, there's a little pushback here. He didn't click his heels and say, yes, Lord. He just asked a couple simple questions. Hmm? How many times has God asked you to do something you didn't question any? How many times sitting in the service, God would say, go to the altar and say, well, Lord, what will people think? Or, Lord, I, I go to the altar every service. Or, God, really, right now? That's a, How many times has God spoken to you, even in church, and you question him in your heart? Hmm? Well, now notice the prophecy. Look at verse 19. And the angel answering said unto him, I'm Gabriel, that stand in the presence of God, 
and am sent to speak unto thee and to show thee these great these glad tidings. And behold, thou shalt be dumb and not be able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed because thou believest not my words which shall be fulfilled in their season. Hmm? I mean, he just asked a couple questions. But the angel of the Lord tells him, because you didn't believe, you're going to be dumb. You're not going to be able to communicate with anybody. You're not going to be able to speak because you didn't believe my prophecy, my pronouncement. And then the pursuance or the fulfillment of it, you find in verses 21 and 22, the people waited a long time for him to come out of the temple. Verse 22, when he came out, he could not speak unto them. Couldn't communicate with them. Now, we see this story, and of course we know, if you've read the Bible, after Elizabeth has the baby, he speaks. The first thing he says is John. Now, he had nine months to deal with the fact that he hadn't believed God. How many times have you not obeyed God to service and then God beat you up over it? Can you imagine nine months of not being able to speak or communicate? I'm interested there. Verse 20, when he says, And behold, thou shalt be dumb and shall not be able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed, because thou believest not my words. I want to preach on this thought for a few minutes tonight. I want to preach on the power of unbelief. I mean, this should have been the greatest day in Zacharias' life. That thing that he always desired and even more so his wife desired, the Lord shows up and because of his faithfulness, because he's blameless, because uh, uh, he has been a true uh, follower of God, God says, here's the desire of your heart. He should have been rejoicing. He should have ran out of the temple, uh, uh, got to Elizabeth, say, look, uh, the Lord shined on us. Uh, the Lord's going to give us a son. Uh, but more importantly than that, God's going to use our son. He's going to change the nation. Uh, 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 God's going to do great things. He should have been rejoicing but he didn't Amen. you see more than just asking a couple questions on how that should be he did not believe God and the power of unbelief it didn't change what God was going to do but it changed the perspective of Zacharias's life and can I say, there's a lot of times God wants to use you in a service, and if you won't obey, you're going to pay the price for it, but God's still going to do what He's going to do. He may pass the blessing on to somebody else and use them because you did not believe. And so I want to give you a few things on the power of unbelief. Can I say the power of unbelief will silence you? That's what happened here. When you don't believe God, God will not use you to be an instrument for Him. Amen. It will silence you. You have nothing to say that's going to bring honor and glory to God. You will not be an effective witness. You will not have an effective testimony. You will not be able to impact anybody else because you haven't believed in your heart. You know why some people's families will never be around them and never come to church and never do anything? Because their testimony is shot before their family because they haven't believed. Hmm? So many folks don't want to have anything to do with God because they've seen what you and how much faith you have in God the power of unbelief will silence you you see if you really believe God's going to affect your family you're going to live like that before God and then God is going to affect your family but if you uh, uh, constantly uh, rest on your mind well God's not going to move in my family you don't believe God, God's going to do anything guess what he won't hmm. uh, God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him God is a reward, rewarder of them that believe. Those who don't believe, He silences them. Hmm? It's a sad thing not to believe. Not only not believe that God can, but believe that God will. There's a difference between having faith and having blind faith. But I, I, I've been in the book, and when there's been things God spoke to my heart, I just believe He's going to do it. If you don't, he'll silence you. 
Zacharias was silenced. He couldn't even share with Elizabeth the great things God was going to do. You say, why didn't he write it down? You, under, you don't understand. In those days, women didn't even read. He couldn't even wrote it down in the sand. Hmm? He couldn't share with her all the great things God had promised until after the promise became fulfilled. Hmm? God silences through the power of unbelief. The power of unbelief, it'll silence you. Hmm? Listen, we don't have much to offer God. Really, what do you have to offer God? What do you have to impress God? But the one thing we do have is our voice. We can praise Him in the midst of a wicked and perverse world. We can have a testimony of how great He is. But if we don't believe, that silences that. Hmm? The one thing we can offer to God is taken away when we don't believe. Can I say there's the power of unbelief? It will silence you. Can I say secondly, it will shackle you. Hmm? When you don't believe, it binds you. Can I say when you do believe, it looses you. But when you don't believe, it binds you. Folks that do not put God first in their life, just listen to them talk. They'll tell you, Brother Donald, how, how great God is and how wonderful God is, but just listen. Before long, they'll start telling you that God can't. They don't use those words, but they'll talk about how miserable their life is and that uh, uh, God hasn't delivered them and God hasn't, God hasn't, God hasn't. They're shackled because they don't believe. Hmm? Huh? How many have heard the statement, you can become whatever you want? You can. You want to be a lawyer? Even at your age. Go to school, you can be a lawyer. The only thing stopping you is you. Hmm? You really can do anything you put your mind to do. You really can be used in great capacities for God. What hinders you is your lack of faith. When you don't believe, the power of unbelief shackles you. Well, I can't. Nope, you can't because you don't believe. You know the difference between t people that achieve and people that don't achieve? People that achieve believe they can. Now, can I say this? When achievers achieve, many times they've been knocked down a whole lot. But they just keep getting up because they believe they can do it. Hmm? Did anybody ever see that movie that come out a couple years ago? The guy's name was Eddie that was the, the skier that jumped, you know, the ski jump for the Olympics. The guy was terrible. Huh? He wasn't big enough, wasn't strong enough, and he was terrible. But he believed he could do it. And the movie, it was, it was kind of funny if you're like me and you got a twisted sense of humor. He'd go down off that ski lift and he'd wipe out, man. I mean, he'd just destroy everything. And it's funny to me, you know. I remember Wide World of Sports on Saturday morning when a guy comes off the side of the mountain flying all over. I mean, a guy broke his neck, but it's still funny to watch, you know. But well, that was Eddie, Eddie the Eagle or something like that. But he just believed he could do it. And he just kept believing. And the Olympic Committee said, no, you can't. He just kept doing it. He kept doing it. And guess what? He went on to do it. He won gold for England. He did it. You know why? Because he believed he could. Everybody else told him he couldn't, but he believed he could. You see, the power of unbelief will shackle you. The power of unbelief says you can't do it. Okay, you can't do it. And you won't do it. But those that believe I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me, guess what you can do? All things. But unbelief, it'll shackle you. Unbelief will silence you. You know what is wrong with Christianity today? Too many people don't believe. I'm talking about so-called saved people. We've gone silent and we're shackled. We just think everything's too big for us. If we've gone too far, shame on us. Hmm? Can I say something about, about unbelief? The power of unbelief will stump you. It'll confuse you. Hmm? Now, the Bible makes it clear God is not the author of confusion. When people are confused, who do you think confuses them? And why do you think they get confused in the first place? Because they don't believe. We don't need a new Bible. I just need to believe the one we have. 
But the reason that there are so many false versions is people don't believe uh, the Bible and then they'll believe some malarkey called the Bible. They're confused. I, I, I'm not kidding you. I, I listened to the Christmas story and one of these false Bibles the other night. I went to a program, listened to this, this Christmas story, and I didn't recognize. I'm not kidding you. It didn't sound anything like the Bible. And I'm thinking, this was supposed to be easier to understand. It was confusing. You know why? Because whoever pinned it down didn't believe. Mm. Amen. I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm convinced the reason so many people are confused about so much is because they haven't believed what God's pinned down. I don't have to worry about everything going on in the world. I just got to believe what God says. Amen. But see, when you don't believe, you'll be stumped. Do you ever wonder why somebody who used to go to a Baptist church goes to a false church? You know why? They didn't believe what they was hearing in the Baptist church. Yeah, now they're confused. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I know for a fact the, the place right up the street here, the vineyard, guy used to mow the grass, stopped by and talked to me one day, and he, and he said he came out of a Southern Baptist church, and he said most of the crowd over there come out of the Southern Baptist church. Well, why'd they end up there? Because they didn't believe. Hmm? And I say, the Southern Baptist Church is way too liberal for me, but it wasn't too liberal for them because they went more liberal because they didn't believe. There's the power of unbelief. It'll silence you, it'll shackle you, it'll stump you, but can I say this? It will sour you. Unbelief will cause you to get bitter. Hmm. Have you ever been around somebody bitter? They want to blame everybody else. You know how they got bitter? They quit believing. Amen. And when you quit believing and you get shackled and you get stumped and you get all that stuff, guess what? You start looking around and find fault. It amazes me. They're never the problem. It's always somebody else. Hmm? As many times as you've heard me say, what has Jesus ever done to you? He's never done anything to any of us. But they always take it out on the things of God and they always want to blame somebody else for their problem. Well, if Brother Josh wouldn't have wore that ugly tie with all the Christmas lights on it, then I might have been able to see Jesus that night. We will come up with some of the dumbest excuses and the bottom line is it's because we just don't believe God. Hmm? It'll sour you. The longer people stay in a, in a state where they're not putting faith in the Lord, the more bitter they become. Life's too short to be bitter. Yes, sir. Hmm. But there's so many people that are bitter. Why? I mean, the Lord gives us joy unspeakable and full of glory. Why are you not happy, happy, happy? Could be a problem with belief, trust, faith. Hmm. Can I say this? The power of unbelief will send you some places. Can I say it'll send you to the hog pen? That's why that boy left the father's house in the first place. He didn't believe everything the father had told him. In the hog pen. Wasted everything he ever had in a hog pen. A lot of people in a hog pen because they didn't believe the Bible. How many times have you heard me say over the years, you may not need this right now, but you better store it up because one day you're going to need it? Well, there's some people who didn't store it up, and the reason they're in the hog pen tonight because they didn't believe it. Hmm. Could I say unbelief will not only send you to a hog pen, sometimes it'll send you to the hospital. A lot of folks don't believe God, and God has to put a hickey on their head. Sometimes they've got to put them down to where they got to, where they'll look up, and sometimes that's in a hospital bed. God does know how to get our attention, and some people end up in the hospital. Your body is the Lord's. He did buy you. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Hmm? One of the doctors Miss Nett works for told her the other day he had to pull out the God card. And Miss Nett said, what? Because this guy don't go to church. Hmm? He said they had this lady come in and said this lady comes in to, to the office all the time and she reeks of cigarettes. He says, it's so bad it causes my allergies to get caught up. He said, I can't hardly walk in the room when this lady comes in. But this lady's one that's always trying to shove God on him. Invite him to church. 
I mean, he had it. He said, look, aren't you a Christian? She said, yeah. So what does the Bible say? The Christian is the temple of the, she said, Holy Ghost. Yeah. Well, how come you smell like cigarettes so bad? Do you think it honors God? You smell it like that and you walk around, people can't even talk to you because the way you smell? She said, well, I started smoking when I was young. And that's no excuse. You said you're a Christian. Why don't you act like one? He said, I said all that before I really knew what I was saying. <laughs> he told Miss Nett, and that's like, you told him that? So ever since then, when I've gotten some feeble excuses from folks, I tell her, we need to get that doctor, call him up, talk to him about all that. Because I tell them every Sunday, they don't listen to me. Huh? It's amazing how people will say one thing, but their lifestyle says something else. Hmm? And it's amazing how we'll justify that. That lady justifies. She tells everybody to come to church and be a Christian, but she smells like a steak and bar or smokestack. How does that honor God? You're saying God's not big enough to help you with things that are harming your testimony. No, it's called unbelief. Amen. See, what folks don't want to admit, they got spiritual problems. A lot of their spiritual problems, they want to blame on other folks. Uh, 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 well, uh, I, I can't do this and I can't do this. No, what you're saying is that God can't do it in your life. Uh, if I asked for a show of hands, I could ask people in here tonight who used to smoke and then God saved them, changed their life, and they raised their hand, I don't smoke anymore. Why would God do it for some and not do it for all? Amen. It's because some don't believe. Hmm? Ah, I don't know where I came from, but I thought I'd throw that out. Somebody was looking on peeking. Huh? That's true. Huh? When God saves you, He starts changing you from the inside out. Now, I understand there are some folks when they first get saved, they just can't quit everything in the sinning business. But when God saves them, He starts convicting them, and then God gives them the power to overcome it if they want to overcome it. They just got to put their faith in Him. I wouldn't put my faith in God that couldn't change me after He saved me. And that's why so many people won't come to church because of people like that lady. Hmm? I see it all the time. You'll see these bumper stickers on these cars about Jesus. And then you roll up and you're looking in there. I'm thinking, I don't want to go to church with that crowd. That crowd's scary. Uh, some of them look like Cheech and Chong, smoke coming out of the windows. And I'm thinking, yeah, you're a Christian. I'm thinking they bought that car with that bumper sticker already on it. Because them folks in there, that bumper sticker does not apply. Hmm? You know I'm telling you the truth. You see the same thing. Hmm? And how come... Some of the biggest junkyard rags of automobiles got bumper stickers on there about how good Jesus is. Huh? Well, if Jesus were that good, you don't think, think he'd get you a car that didn't come out of the junkyard? I understand. If that's what you got to drive, that's a blessing. But hey, put a different bumper sticker on there or something. All right? Yeah. By the way, Brother Tony, I love your bumper stickers, both of them. I commonly done missing that day. I said, look at Brother Tony's bumper. I like them both. Huh? One's about Jesus, the other's about Trump. I say, amen. Hallelujah. What a blessing. Believe in both. Hmm? I said, Brother Doug, you shouldn't say that. Well, you ought to see my 401k since uh, Donald Trump got in there. I say, hallelujah, thank the Lord for putting him in there, huh? Hillary had been in there, I'd have to be borrowing money to put in my 401k to get it to zero. Are you listening? <laughs> I'm just trying to tell you, a lot of people's problems happen because they don't believe. Amen. This time of year, you see it all over. You just see the word, believe. <laughs> believe. Believe on the Lord, thou shalt be saved. But it's much more than that. He's a wonderful God that's able to do great things in your life. You just got to believe not only that He can, but that He will. But the power of unbelief will send you to the hog pen, it'll send you to the hospital, but it sends a lot of people to hell. Matter of fact, that's the only sin in the Bible we see that will send you to hell. Hebrews 4 12 says, For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For we which have believed 
do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, uh, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. Uh, for he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, uh, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. Uh, and in this place again, uh, if they shall enter into my rest. Uh, verse 6, Seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, uh, and they to whom it was first preached uh, entered not in because of unbelief unbelief sends people to hell hmm? because they won't believe now as God's people and as a preacher there have been times I've had to ha humble myself for God saying Lord I believe but help thou mine unbelief there's some things that are too wonderful for me Lord and help me to just have faith that you're able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Amen. But the power of unbelief is crippling many Christians and many churches. This time of year when we celebrate the birth, and we celebrate that we believe that he came, why don't we take it a step farther? Believe that he is and, a reward, and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen. Let's just believe. Hmm? Say, so how in the world is Brother Tony living better than he did eight years ago when he was working and he hasn't worked since because of disability? How in the world is that possible? I mean, Brother Tony, I'm talk look at him. I mean, there's nothing impressive. Look at him. He'll tell you he's, he's, he's not the brightest light bulb in the bunch, and he'll tell you he's got physical problems. But do you, you realize he's driving a, a new Toyota RAV4, and you realize you know, he owns a home, and you realize uh, he's fair and well? How is that possible? Well, there's a lot of things that isn't impressive about him. But you know one thing that is impressive about him? He just believes God. Hmm? Can I say God honors faithfulness? And God honors faith. And when you just believe, God takes care of it. I don't know how many times I've heard him say, I don't know, it's just God. Well, that's good enough. Just God is good enough. Hmm? Amen. See, so many times we overcomplicate it. We try to figure out how he's going to do it, when he's going to do it, why he's going to do it, and who he's going to use to do it. And all the while, we're really not believing. Nowhere did Zacharias tell Gabriel, well, I don't believe it's going to happen. No, he was just questioning how it was going to happen. And when we question how, we're really questioning whether or not God can it's a better day in your life when you just learn okay Lord however you're going to do it thank you it'll be wonderful and just let God do it Amen. just believe I wonder tonight how's your faith just as there is a power of unbelief there is a power of believing and when you really believe the Lord can change your world and change the world around you Everybody that God used in the Bible, really used in an empowerful way, they just believe God. You've heard it said, he's not interested in your abilities, he's interested in your availability. He just wants you to believe that he will. And when you start believing that he will, and you start living like you believe that he will, there's no telling what he'll do in your life. He's well able, friend. How's your belief system in your heart tonight? Do you believe? If not, I'd get in the altar and say, Lord, help my unbelief. Because that power of unbelief is strong. Can I say negativity is so strong? It's not more powerful than positivity, but it's more practical and it is more prevalent than being positive. More people are negative than positive. That's why most of the news that is blared out through the airways is negative. That's why when you talk to people, most of them are negative. You know why? There's a power in that. There's a power of unbelief. Why don't you choose to just believe God and put your faith in Him and He'll uplift your countenance and you'll find out there is positive lifestyle in believing in God. Life's too short to be negative and life's too short to be bound by the power of unbelief. Why don't you start believing tonight? Believing in the great God we say we do believe in. 
and watch and see what he does in your life. Let's all stand. I'm done. Brother Ray, get a song of invitation. While they're picking out a song, let's pray. Father, I'm glad for faith. Lord, you gave a measure of faith to every man. But Lord, you uh, expect us to exercise that faith and stretch that faith. And Lord, to use that faith and to believe that all things are possible through thee. Lord, I pray that you'd help our unbelief I pray you'd break the powers of unbelief in our hearts and in our lives and those lives around us. Help us to truly be a light and a witness. Help us to truly point others to you through just having faith. And God, I pray you'd do great things. Thank you for using John the Baptist in the way you did to be the forerunner of Christ. And thank you for using Christ in our lives. And God, help us to realize that you'll use us if we'll just believe. Have your will and way in this invitation now. Speak to hearts. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.